Wow. Um, I've got to say, we've got, we're going through the papers now with Winston Davis and Emma Burnell, and Emma just said in the break, oh, I'm having a midlife crisis, I've just released an album. <laughs> so we're just having a quick listen. It's very good. Fabulous. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm, I'm very proud of it. I have to say that I can take very little credit. I write the words and sing, but I have a fantastic music, musical collaborator who is really the genius behind any of it. Wow. It's great, though. Fancy doing that? Oh, I'd love to do that. If only I could sing. <laughs> it does Joshua. help a little bit. I mean, Just... I say sing, you know, it's... A... <laughs> it's very good. I, I shall be downloading that later. <laughs> All right, let's see what was, what's in the papers this morning. We'll start with the Sunday Mirror, Winston, um, looking at small boats. Yeah, so we've got uh, the Immigration Minister is criticising uh, the lawyers and lords for blocking the Rwanda plan, um, saying, talking about a third of small boats arrived since 2018 have taken place on Rishi Sunak's watch. So, um, yeah, trying to basically have a go at people, trying to stop the Rwanda plan. Yeah. yeah well. I mean, what do you make of it all? Would you like to see it enacted or, or not? No, seriously, like, if you're, or you're a sane person, like, despite however the people are coming here and rights and wrongs of it, you cannot say it's a sensible thing to be sending them to a country that's got, like, 50% unemployment, human rights violations. It's not a safe but place. But what if that plan is yeah. such a deterrent that it actually stops people coming? OK, so... So you, got... you don't end up needing to send people there because... The threat of it works. So what? It's a hell of a yeah. So if. what? Yeah, it's okay. So then, what if though the people that are coming, or some of those people that are coming, are so scared of being killed and persecuted in their countries that they'd rather take the risk of crossing the channel and then maybe going to Rwanda rather than staying somewhere where they, them and their families could be killed? I don't know. See, but it, yeah, but look, if I mean, there is an argument to say. Um, if people have actually got a, a, a real concern, they're really asylum seekers here, go through a legal route. Well, it, that would be lovely. If there if was legal routes, <laughs> many That's of them the were problem. In there are not... It, safe and legal routes is the obvious answer. It isn't gimmicks like Rwanda. Um, and uh, as Winston says, if you've already put your life at risk crossing one of the busiest shipping uh, lanes in the world, the very small off chance that you might be sent to Rwanda is not going to be a but deterrent. It wouldn't be the off chance, would it? It would be everyone who came over. No, it's really way. not. It's a very small proportion of them. Even the numbers that have agreed with Rwanda is an incredibly small proportion of the numbers we're currently getting. So there is, there, you know, it, it really is. It's one in eighty. But uh, also, we're assuming that, that people know about. The, the, the Rwanda... Well, they would the, if it was up and running. Sent, well, but would they? If you're in a refugee camp in... Yeah, they're, know, they're in probably Syria, not would you it. actually have heard about it? They're probably not reading the front pages of the British newspapers. They're, they're talking to their family and friends who will be telling them, you know, if you can get here, it will be safer for you than it is there. And that's just factually true. So why is it only young men coming over then, predom predominantly? Well, there are... And, and partly because the journey is so hard, because we don't have safe and legal routes. So it's the people who are coming and the people who are robust enough to be able to get here on those terribly small boats. Mm. But it's not just young men. We, you know, we've seen a lot of, of children dying in the Channel too. We have there have been tragic mm. places like that, but yes, no, no doubt about it. All right, well, look, it's a controversial one, always is. Um, I'm sure you've got some views on that. Let's have a look at MPs behaving badly in the Sunday Times. Emma? Yeah, so um, there are... There's a bill uh, that Michael Gove is trying to put through Parliament at the moment that would make it harder for landlords to have a no-fault eviction, i.e. just throw someone out of their home whenever. Um... There are 39, I believe, Tory MPs who are landlords of over 50 properties, so some of them have more than one, who have already signed amendments to weaken this and to make it much, much, you know, basically a pro-landlord amendments to these bills. Um, there is a balance to be struck. Obviously, if you own property, there is a balance to be struck in terms of what you can and can't do with it. There's a balance to be struck for people who are stuck in the private mm. rental system for years and years and years. Um, and I don't believe that these amendments strike that balance. I think that the, the bill, you know, not normally one to big up Michael Gove, but I think it's a half-decent bill and it, it, it's at least a start in trying to rebalance the rights between tenants and landlords. OK. okay. Uh, let's talk about what we were 
teasing earlier, Winston. Yes. Wood in space. Explain <laughs> all this. Well, uh, Japanese scientists have come up with uh, a wooden satellite which doesn't... Uh... Why? See, just stop there. A wooden satellite. <laughs> OK, you're right. used already. Well, but the, what they're saying is that every satellite that's out there now, 10,000 of them orbiting the, uh, the, the planet, every one that comes back in, when it disintegrates, it, it has basically tiny little metal particles that mm. float around in the atmosphere. Yeah. By bringing wood, it makes it more environmentally friendly. Um, well, that's, that's what they're saying. Well, well, yeah, I guess on when it eventually the orbit degrades, yeah. it will just be gone. Yeah. Or most of it. Yeah, I mean, it's basically there is an awful lot of space junk that we've left mm. floating around. When it comes back into the atmosphere, it can cause damage. Um, these, on the other hand, would not. Um, what they've been doing is experimenting with different types of wood. So the one that's been sent up is made of magnolia wood, mm. which apparently is the least likely to have um, any kind of long term corrosive yeah, effects. Yeah, it's been found to be most resistant to cracking. Yeah. And it could be launched on a US rocket this summer. It could be, and I think this is—I think this is a really interesting. I mean, I, I love any space idea. stories. Um, I mean, I found it hard not to say "wood in space." Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but Back I to just, the Muppets days. Absolutely, but I, I love uh, anything to do with space, and I find. I just don't it, know that... how it's going to last because obviously, what people won't necessarily realise is when you're in the sunlight, mm. that wood will become very hot. And then, well, and it's then, very cold in space. Well, no, so that... but, when, but no, but when you're out of the sunlight, that's when it gets very so cold. That, this is what they've so the been... the extreme of the temperature. This is what they've been experimenting on, and apparently, um, yeah, this type of wood is the least likely to, um, to crack up. Um, um, it will only burn out once it comes back into the atmosphere, so it will be mm. released off of a rocket, uh, and then once it's released into space, it will be able to withstand that. Well, theoretically, we we will find out able to withstand the very very cold temperatures without cracking up. But it also, when it comes back into the Earth's atmosphere, will simply burn away. Mm. Yeah, because it's saying that inside, when it's up in space, there's no oxygen yeah. and there's no creatures. So yeah. That's why it's, it basically stops it from rotting, stops it from de deteriorating. Yeah, it wouldn't, up yeah, there. It wouldn't mm. deteriorate. Yeah. And that's it says it's the temperatures that worry me. Uh, but we shall see. Oh, it's interesting. It's an interesting one. Um, food banks for pets, Winston. No, yeah. this doesn't surprise me. Yeah, so um, they're saying that 8 out of 10 um, pet owners are struggling to, to feed their pets. Mm -hmm. They're saying that food prices have gone up 58%. So now they've opened some uh, food bank for pets um, and uh, it's only on referral only so you can only get on it if you've been referred by the council uh, a charity or food banks so it's people that are struggling not people that just you know turn yeah. up in their Porsche and jump out and get some free free bit it's all well and good I, I think I'd have to say on it though if, you, if you're struggling at that point you've got to, you'd have to sign something to say well unless my situation improves I'm not I won't have any more pets yes. after either what, what's I think, taken any new I pets I think we get animals don't we and, and we don't take into consideration how much they do actually cost, cost. over their course of their lives when you add it all up. I tried to do it once in mine. Oh, don't. Honestly, so I nearly no. fainted. I mean, no. I don't have life insurance and I have pet insurance. Yeah. It, I mean, it, it, it is one of the biggest outgoings behind the mortgage mm. that I've got is my darling little cat. Wouldn't change it for the world, but um, yeah, they're not cheap. There's also the fact that I seem to have a cat and a half because there's another one oh. that comes in and eats half a smudgy's <laughs> biscuits. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, look, the thing I think I'd say about it is that Look, okay, um, you, if they've got pets and they're, and they're struggling with it, a pet could last 10, 15 yeah. years. You don't know what your position is going to be. Exactly. For the last five years, I've been part of a group in my local area where we said we support families at Christmas time and during hard times in the year. And people, you know, they find themselves in situations just because they've like, some of them are working families that have lost their job from COVID or been ill from COVID. Or so it's like, we have a big thing about this, no judgment. We had, a, we had a one, one of the families that would come to us one year, the lady had a Range Rover, she had whatever, but this is a thing. And people said, oh, well, she shouldn't get it. Well, actually, turned out that a partner had left her. She'd been saddled with the, this, this, this car that she couldn't afford. She was really struggling. Actually, it was a lot for her to just go and ask for help in the first place and then told, no, you can't have it. So that we say no judgment. If you're at that point where you're coming to get that support, mm. then no judgment. Yeah. That, do you know, that's a really valid point. Yeah. We, we, we do 
We make jump to judgments. conclusions we far do. too often. No, I would just like to say point. that the one that they've um, pointed out in the newspapers is actually in Hyams Park, which is where, where my sister lives. So it's a lovely area. It's and a it's great, great idea. To see and, and people it, doing yeah, this. Yeah, and it's better than you know people having to give up their pets, which. And also no, people no. going without themselves in order because I've yeah you know, there have been times when if I've got twenty quid left in the bank at the end of the month it smudges food that gets bought first. Yeah. 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 All right, you two. It's been a real pleasure to see you both. Thank, thank you both. Thank, thank you, Emma. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, let's get a check on the weather for you this morning.